The upended submarine continues to sink, slowly but surely, a long, long journey to the bottom of the sea. Lynn and the little lady found the darkness and the salt water closing in on them, but at the very last second, something saved them. Now it looks at them, down at them quietly. My head is filled with one giant question. What in the world is this thing? Eek! I see you managed to survive, detective. Hey, you're... Excuse my appearance. I seem to have lost my body. Oh, and you there. You're the ghost who's been saving Lynn all evening, aren't you? Y you knew about me all along? Of course. What else would explain all those unnatural things happening? If you knew, how come you didn't do anything about it all this time? And how come you decided to save us all of a sudden? I thought you wanted to get revenge on us. I don't really know. Please, you gotta tell me. I need to know. Who in the world are you? Sissel, look what happened. Look at you. What happened? I can't hold on to that image for, of myself any longer. You can't remember who you are? That's right. I came all this way tonight trying to chase down my lost memory. For quite a bit of tonight, I thought I was you, Sissel. Sissel. My name isn't Sissel. I bet you'll remember really soon who you are and who I am, too. What? The man in front of me is not me. I'm even further away from the truth. Or maybe not. Something is stirring in my mind, a memory about to emerge. Do I know this man? Now that I've shed my image of myself, I feel like I'm one step closer to the truth. They got us good. It's all over for the submarine. The engine room is destroyed. There's a hole, hole in the hull, and it's sinking as we speak. What are you doing here? I thought you had to deal with those people. They betrayed me. I was a fool to trust them. They already have what they wanted now. The Temzik fragment. I didn't know they had it all figured out. You mean they figured out the source of your powers? Yeah. That meteorite's radiation has two effects on living creatures. It gives power and time. If you don't mind, we'd like to hear more. These ten years, I've been watching that junkyard superintendent do his research, and I think I've got a, some of it figured out. The meteorite's radiation gives spirits special powers, like possess like possessing and manipulating objects. In my case, swapping objects. Exactly. Apparently there are diff individual differences in the powers we get, and it seems these powers change as time goes by. They do. Yeah, my powers have changed over these past ten years. At first I can only manipulate small living creatures. Now then, how do you suppose we got these powers? It's simple. It is? How then? In a nutshell, we died while exposed to the energy emitted by the meteorite. It's radiation. That's what does it? Dying while being exposed to the radiation? On that day ten years ago. A fragment of that meteorite pierced my heart and I died. So, of course, I received special powers. Hey, wait a minute. Is that how I got my powers, too? Y you know, you might be right. Are 
Aren't the Temzik remnants still right there in that park at the bottom of the crater? You're right. So that must mean I must have died in the presence of the meteorite's radiation too. Another effect the meteorite's radiation has on us is that it gives us time. Again, I think this time effect is centered around the theme of death, but it's not all that clear. So the fact that I can return to four minutes before a person's death is another effect of that meteorite? One of the characteristics of that meteorite is the ability to replay that moment of death. Replay the moment of death? Ah, this is all so strange and confusing, I can't take it all in. It makes about as much sense to me as anything else. Yeah, strange and confusing. That's just a, that just about sums up the object that pierced my body that day. Thanks to that meteorite fragment, my very existence is a contradiction. What do you mean? That day, when the fragment pierced my heart, I lost my life. However, because it remained inside of me, that fragment continued to constantly regenerate my body. In other words, my body was continuously cycling between the moments that separated my life and death. Wh what? My body's vital functions stopped ten years ago, but my body's time is perpetually stopped at the moment just before death. Time just stopped, huh? So I simply just existed. Not really alive, not really dead. That much, that pretty much sums up these last ten years for me. Ever since that incident in the park, my body hasn't aged a day, my hair hasn't grown an inch. Come to think of it, that old pigeon guy mentioned something. He said he couldn't cut this guy's body with a scalpel. So I guess as soon as an incision was made, his body would be regenerated. Wow. Before I left this country, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to get revenge on the people who stole our lives. Our lives? As part of the deal, I made those guys promise to cooperate. Cooperate? You mean the kidnapping? And all went fine. I manipulated the justice minister and made him issue the execution code. But I thought he might call off the execution at the last second. So that's why he wanted his daughter kidnapped. But they kidnapped the wrong girl. Little did I know, they had their own reasons for cooperating with me. Huh? Their objective was to wipe out everybody who had to do with Temzik. Detective Jowd was one such person, so they were happy to cooperate. Inspector Cabanella and that junkyard super, they were slated to be wiped out too. And as it turns out... I was one of their targets as well, so they stole my Temzik fragment, and here I am. But they had one more final target. You, detective. Me? If you weren't there in that park ten years ago, I never would have thought of doing something as stupid as taking a hostage. Uh, okay, but I was just a little kid playing in the park. Yeah, I know. Huh? Ten years later, you'd become a detective, looking into Jowd's case. Tonight I invited you to a quiet spot on the edge of town. It was a trap, you see. I told you who I was. You never saw my face that day ten years ago, so of course you didn't recognize me. I took possession of you, and to make you shoot me.
your subconscious resisted me. Such incredible power. It was the first time I wasn't able to control somebody completely. The aim was off, and the first shot missed the mark. The junkyard was equipped with security cameras. I knew you'd be wanted for murder. That was my plan anyway. But they had other ideas. They simply wanted you wiped out. But then, something threw a big monkey wrench into their scheme. I showed up. I was supposed to meet with it. I was supposed to meet up with them after that. But then something went wrong. What happened? My body disappeared. Aha, the inspector in the white was responsible for that one. My precious bargaining chip was in that body. I had to get it back, no matter what. The inspector caused me no end of trouble. But why were those people targeting me? I never even heard of the Temzik meteorite. Because you were looking into the Jowd case. They thought you would find out about Temzik sooner or later. And that's pretty much the whole story. The only thing left to do now is wait for the water pressure to crush the submarine. Oh no! There are no cores that link from here to the water's surface. I have an idea. We hook up the phone line and... There are no communication cables down this deep. They meant for this submarine to be my coffin. A coffin for the dead. There's no escape. I think I kind of understand now, what you've been feeling these ten years. You... what? This feeling, cut off from the world all alone in a submarine, sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea, that must be how you felt all along. Lynn? Camilla, is it true we're stuck here? What? Oh, uh... If my dad... If my dad was here, I bet he'd save us. Oh, Camilla, I'm so sorry. Hmm, that's funny. What is, Sissel? There's something I don't understand. Why would they go to all the trouble of detaching the control room? What? Why didn't they just steal the Temzik fragment and escape if that's what they wanted? Why did they have to jettison your body off to the sea? Hmm, that's a good question. But I guess it doesn't matter why now. We'll never find it again. We have no idea where it was launched to. Wait a minute! Yes, we do! This will tell us where Detective Jowd is! That present from the Inspector in White. That's right, Detective Jowd told me to hold on to it for him, and the bullet is still in the person's body in the command room, right? Then we should be able to tell exactly where it is with this. But, even if we find out where it is, how do we get there? We should be able to figure out, figure something out between the three of us, with our powers, right, Miss Lynn? Right. Oh, and wait a minute, what about a torpedo? A torpedo. In any case, it's way too early to give up. Hmm, it looks like Detective Jowd is our last hope. Come on, let's get started. Hello guys, and welcome to TGN, the game nerd the shore. I talk about roleplay games, and today we're going to be playing 
Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and saved Lynn from dying once again. And in this episode, we have met the man in red who is now, uh, you know, completely possessing uh, these different robotic parts and stuff like that. And we learned a bit more about what happened 10 years ago, you know, different the characters different thought processes and we're gonna do our best to try to escape the submarine mmm grapes uh, let me go ahead and talk to everyone first so my, my dad isn't here on the submarine don't worry we're all going to go get him right now okay I hope I didn't hurt Lynn's feelings what I said about my dad saving us if he was here Oh, don't worry about that. Comments like that just roll off right off Miss Lynn's back. She's really thick-skinned. Ouch. I'm going to start being tougher, too. I want to make my dad proud of me. M Miss Camilla! I'm sure your dad is very proud of you, Camilla. So, his shell is definitely there in the command room, right? Just without the fragment? It's there, yeah. But I don't know about the calling it a shell. Detective Jowd's watch will tell us exactly where it is. Right, he said it was a radio receiver, didn't he? There might still be another torpedo on the submarine. If we use it, we can get to Detective Jowd. That's a that's a brilliant plan, Detective. You think so? <laughs> so, what are you going to do? Ride on the top of the torpedo? Of course not. You guys are going to go. Darn, I kind of wanted to see that. Did you want to see me drown? <laughs> Yeah, we ride this robotic arm up, and, uh, what do you have to say? Why is this machine shoving grapes at me? Well, it looks like the private cabin of the top officer, doesn't it? This machine is probably for feeding him grapes while he lies in bed. Oh, it sounds heavenly! I've been thinking about this for a while now, but don't you think that country's use of technology is just a little off? So does the guy who made a deal with said country. Anyway, it looks like the arm of this machine is a bit busted. Speaking of grapes, I remember when I was younger, I had the worst taste in terms of food. Like, I did not like any good foods. Like, I, I didn't like mashed potatoes, I didn't like grapes. Uh, but now I absolutely love them, so... There's that. Can't play his missile right now. Let me go ahead and talk to him, though. Okay, what do we do now? We go find the command room that was launched somewhere into the sea. What? How? Just to let you know, I don't like water very much. Uh, according to Lynn, that key is... that The key to our plan is a torpedo. Kind of a missile. Missile? You have a missile right here. I don't think she's talking about that kind of a missile. Now then, where did we see another miss... Torpedo. Let's go ahead and operate this again. If we can. There we go. And then we can use this telephone. Let's go to the torpedo room. The torpedo room, huh? There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. Oh, I get it. You're going to use a missile to ram the control room. Well, I don't know about ram. We don't want to blow up Detective Jowd, but something like that. We'll climb up to the torpedo room, too. Up is definitely safer. Okay, I'll see you there, then. It looks like the torpedoes can be launched manually with these switches. There are two tubes, so there should be one more left. I guess the first thing we have to do is load, in, load it into the tube. When it comes to missiles, you can count on me! I'll enter the coordinates of the command room in the torpedo. And I just turned on the backup power. We ought to be able to use the switches now. Okay, let's try it. Good luck! Alrighty, where is... There you are, missile. What'll happen to these two ladies? I think that's up to us, and our powers. What? This is no time to be standing around, unsure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength, missile? Me? Of course I will! Count on it! Nice, and now we can play as him. How's it going there? I'm just calculating the command room's coordinates now. I we have to pull... Put in a slight offset, though. Don't want to blow it up. I'm sure Detective Jowd would appreciate that. 
Well, leave this to me. Good luck with loading the missile. Okay, thanks. If we lower this switch... The switch won't budge. Maybe it's broken? But I don't think the entire device is broken, though. It would probably work if I could only move this switch. Well, we'll just have to find a way to move it somehow, but I can't do it with my powers alone. If only there was someone here we knew who could move stuff like that. I want to see if I could talk to... Hold on. There we are. Please help my dad, sissy. I'll be okay here. I'm not scared. Leave it to me, Camilla. We'll be back with your father to save you. I promise. Wait a minute, Cecil. What is it? What you just said. I wanted to say that. Thank you, Missile. We can do it. I know we can. Alright, let's move these levers. Let's switch the switches. And now... Let me go ahead and... Let me go ahead and have Missile move here. There we go. That can be kind of difficult to do with a D-pad. And then... Lower the switch. There we go! That torpedo looks serviceable. I'll set on this end too. But something's odd. What is? Command room, it looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking. Yep, it looks like it's completely run out of power. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Right, okay, hop into the missile. I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. So we go ahead and hop on, and then... I've already set the torpedo's course. It'll head toward the command room where Detective Jout is. Twelve seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be your window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. Then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Just hold on until we get back. Okay, come on, missile. Missile? I... I'm sorry, I can't go... What? I just can't. How could I leave? I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. I can't do it. Missile. I swapped the switches so the missile can be launched. You'll have to do the rest, Sissel. I can't do it either. I can't ask Missile to come with me after that. I understand exactly how he feels. I want you to go, Missile. What? But Miss Lynn! You staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Sissel, you might be able to make something happen, and that's our only hope. But what if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again. Never ever again. Even I can understand that. I, I couldn't stand that. Don't worry, Missile. Miss Camilla? I, kn I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you. I'll be right here waiting for you. We'll see each other then. Don't worry. Miss Camilla! That's a good boy, Missile. Now, are you ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw this switch. We're ready. Sissel? Yes? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you. For everything. And I'm glad I met you too, Detective. But we're going to see each other again, right, sissy? Right, Missile? And that's right. We promise, little lady. Of course we will! I'll never forget you. No matter what happens. Here goes, then. Good luck, friend. These 12 seconds are lasting an eternity. I strive to think of a way to save Lynn and the little lady the whole time. But how can a ray of light, our hope, reach thus far down into the deep sea? Before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up.
Detective Jowd. I bet that big mask man did this. I'm going to bite him. You'd better not. You might break your teeth. The command room has lost power and is sinking. So I wonder what this masked man is going to do. Let's talk to Detective Jowd. Sorry for the wait, Detective Jowd. Who are you? Are you Sissel? Please, excuse my appearance. I can't believe you made it here. How is Camilla? And what about Lynn? Well, it's kind of a long story. I told Detective Jowd about everything that happened on the submarine Yanoa. So the submarine is badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? I wish I knew. I know the answer to that one. It's because he's afraid of my powers. Y you You followed us? I didn't even notice. It's been ten long years, Detective Jowd. Are you... Yomiel? So you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh? Yomiel? That's right. But those people on the Yanoa were calling you Sissel. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favor? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out about my true identity all night. Sure, go ahead. I'm sure there's plenty we can still tell you. Right, Detective Jowd? Right. Ten years ago, you were a top systems engineer, weren't you? Systems engineer? What's that? By the way, I'm a top Pomeranian, you know. Well, it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computers. I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's how I got roped into joining that project. Project? What project? It was a project aimed at reorganizing the nation's top secret information. The goal was to build a new system using multidimensional programming theory. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. Doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know anything about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. However, this project was also the target of a secret plot. Bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. I never thought for the life of me that I'd have to deal with the spies. It was never made public, but every organization in the country moved on this one. And then, one day, the name of a certain programmer emerged as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. The police arrested you, and then, that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room and took Lil Lin as hostage. And by the way, Detective Jowd, when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Yomil. Ten years ago. My soul was split from my body and I lost everything. I was steeled in eternal darkness. I existed in this world, no question about that. But nobody noticed my presence. What good were my powers? They didn't help anybody. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. In fact, it only made it worse. I wanted to disappear. But I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lin described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. An overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair. And I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. And so that's why you murdered Alma. That's right. I wanted you to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. 
I wanted you to feel the same pain I felt. What? It was the twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. And then, as I was plotting my revenge, I had an idea. I came up with a plan to use these powers of mind to make a deal. There's something I just don't understand about all that deal. I'm sure your powers would be very valuable to them, but... What would you get out of the deal? A new life. Life! I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they help me with my revenge plot. And the second was a rebirth for me. Rebirth. A new beginning, eh? I didn't care if it was a fake life or an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul. A name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to go grow old in a society that would accept me. And finally, I wanted to die surrounded by a loving family. That's the kind of life I asked them for. A completely man-made life. That's right. I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And the response in the end was betrayal. They were making their moves much more carefully than I suspected. They sent spies to this country and researched my powers on their own. And then, they even figured out what Temzik was all about. And you had no idea they were doing all this. Not, none at all. I was a fool. So then, why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of the Temzik meteorite from the park? They couldn't. Uh-huh. After the manipulator incidents, research was conducted in this country, too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's powers. By Inspector Cabanella and the old pigeon guy, eh? At first, the government didn't believe the report. But then, they decided to put the park under surveillance, just in case. Surveillance, huh? It looks like an ordinary, peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. Don't tell me that odd leaflet guy is one of them. No, not him. He's just a plain old odd person. That park is like a silent battlefield of an international scale. So that's why they couldn't steal the Temzik meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy that park in order to secure the Temzik meteorite. So that's it, eh? So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? Yeah, that's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You've managed to steal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Well, shall we get started? Started with what? Bring Detective Jowd back to life, of course. W what What good will that do now? B but we promised! We promised Miss Linda and Miss Camilla we'd save them! And we can't do that without you, Detective Jowd. I've been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. All right, fine. Let's see where it leads us. Here we go, then. Back to four minutes before your death. So, where are we headed? We are not headed anywhere, Detective. What? There was only enough fuel on board to launch us away, Detective. We will run out soon, and that will be our destination, Detective. What are you talking about? That would mean that you're trapped here too! By the way, I am not human, Detective. I am a remote-controlled robot, Detective. What?! Your country's use of technology is just plain off. We get that a lot, Detective.
Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? That's nothing but a shill there. It's hardly a threat anymore. Commander Sith likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, Detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? There's no need for you to know, Detective. Now's the time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, Detective. Ugh. Camilla, forgive me. It isn't over yet. It isn't? Remember what the big masked man said? It ain't possibility, no matter how small. Possibility. In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning this situation around. Trick time. Huh? What is it, detective? Look at Yomiel's shell. There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. The Temzik fragment is gone. Could this change... Could this change in his shell give us some kind of lead? I figured it out. I know what this possibility, no matter how small, is that they're afraid of. What is? My time was perpetually stopped thanks to the power of the Temzik. His body cycled between the moments that separated his life and death. Right, but not anymore. The Temzik fragment has been taken away. Exactly. So what does that mean? I get it! Your body won't come back to life anymore! The moment the Temzik fragment was removed from my shell became a regular corpse. So, let's see. That means... We can go back? Back to four minutes before your death? But, wait a minute. Exactly when is that death? That's simple. We'll find out. When we get there, let's move! I fell back through the cracks of time for what seemed like forever, and then I saw it. The final death at the end of this long night. Who exactly am I? I've already seen all of the clues. All I have to do now is remember. The final journey to the truth starts now.